We've just finished a panel on uh, energy and climate change, probably two of the biggest issues of our times. And in the panel, we had Harish Hande of Selco Solar, co-founder of Selco Solar, who does distributed solar power. And I'd like to ask uh, Harish what, what the key takeaways from his session were. No, the key takeaways for us was very clear in terms of today, uh, we need to talk about energy access and poor. How do you actually link energy access and poverty alleviation? where the added benefit is climate change or adaptation. But there's a beautiful linkage between sustainable energy and poverty elevation. We should focus on that, and that's very applicable for the whole developing world. It's a very vulgar thinking today that poor is a market, and poor are beneficiaries, poor are consumers. We don't look at poor as partners. We don't look at poor as employers. We don't look poor as asset creators. And we do not look at poor as solution providers. I think we... We need to actually reverse that, create the appropriate ecosystems for the poor to become asset creators, solution providers, and their own owners of their own life. You work in a lot of rural areas and or, or areas with the poor. So have you seen innovations and solutions come? And can you give us examples of this kind of Absolutely, thing? because if you look at if you look at many of the poor in, in many of the rural areas, they are their their cash flows. They can come up with brilliant financial mechanism how to afford. I mean, we have poor who earn less than 1,600 rupees a month, but they buy an 8,000 rupee system because they have figured out how to pay on a daily basis to a bank. We all think about monthly payments. They figured out how to pay on a daily basis. So these small type of financial innovations, along with market linkages, have actually helped the poor to get sustainable energy without actually talking about climate change. So is this, is the, are the innovations coming from people who are providing these services now and, uh, you know, or are they coming locally? No, no, see, today the problem is we talk about we versus they. I think it's, it's today what happens is in the world, we come up with a solution, try to fit a problem. We need to come up with the problems, then create the appropriate solutions. Who are going to come up with the problems are the poor. Who are going to come up with the solutions are the poor. They have created, there are multiple such examples. We need to remove our bias and open our thinking process. Do you think in that sense that India has a lot to uh, teach the world on this and lead uh, you know, on, on these uh, solutions for climate change problems and energy problems? Absolutely, because India is a par paradox between an overdeveloped and an underdeveloped country. We have problems that a Chad would have. We have problems that a Latin America would have. We have solutions that America has. We have solutions that Europe has. No other country actually has that balance between the poor and the rich, solutions and the problems. So one solution that we create can be applicable in Chad, one solution that we create in Southeast Asia. We can be the knowledge house of solutions for the future. Is there a, you know, I mean, a lot of the uh, solutions that are suggested seem very scattered. I mean, is there scalability to many of these? They're highly replicable. The processes can be highly replicable. Nothing scales up really fact in the service. All are replicable. A street vendor has not scaled up, but the street vendor process has replicated. Have you ever heard about a street vendor going out of business? No. We need to replicate processes, decentralized processes, so the ownership is with the poor. And the same old Gandhian model of decentralization. Is there a lot of uh, realization that is now happening? Yours has been a case that's celebrated in Selco. Everybody talks about it as an example. So uh, have you seen within your own uh, work here m more such activity happening? Yeah, in, sometimes you're frustrated. It's only on the celebration. Nobody, everybody is. But I think it's, I'm, I'm very glad that a lot of the non-English speakers have actually taken it up. They are the key to this country. It cannot be left to the thing. We all English speakers have become middlemen. I think the non-English speakers of this country can actually provide the right solution, and that's where I, I have the most hope. Thank you, Harish. Uh, on that inspiring note, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, sir.